Welcome to another episode of Animation Power Tips sponsored by Autodesk. So in today's episode, I would like to touch on the subject of mocap versus hand key. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of uh, mocap cleanup, how you're supposed to do it, and also hand key. Um, some of the things that you have to think about uh, in more than practical examples on how to do it. Because uh, this is something that comes up a lot. Do you like hand key or do you like mocap, right? Even in interviews. It definitely requires a different mindset for each. And both of them have great things that you guys should definitely embrace, especially if you want to get into games, because you're going to eventually work on both in games and you have to tackle them in different ways, depending on what you do. And uh, this is how you actually go about it. So without further ado, let's get to it. So before I actually start this video, I want to preface this by saying that mocap and hand key are genuinely two very different things. In one hand, you have hand key, you're actually doing all the animation yourself, therefore you have a better sense of ownership. And on the other hand, you have mocap where the motion has already been set and you're just editing the motion. However, there's an art to editing that motion in order for you to actually get the most out of the mocap and not destroy the original mocap data that was so expensive to shoot. So let's start with mocap. So the process to actually kind of capture mocap is kind of convoluted and it takes quite a few years for you to get used to it. You need to plan it really well. You need to actually go into a studio and you actually shoot some mocap, which is normally a lot of fun. Now, depending on the studio that you work with, normally you can actually jump on a suit, on a mocap suit and shoot the mocap yourself. And that is really, really cool because if you actually work in a studio like that, it means that you can start practicing shooting mocap and actually getting the most out of the mocap. So normally you have to have an idea for the mocap, um, have to have an idea, and then you have to actually kind of jump on the suit and perform that idea the best way you can. Sometimes you actually have to have props, actually most of the times, right? The most uh, regular example is weapons, weapon animation, you need props for that. Normally like uh, prop weapons like AK-47 or pistol, really good for you to actually do reloads and all that stuff. Really, really nice to do that. And then there's things like swords and like props, like shields and things like that. All of that can be mocapped and brought into your mind. Now, if you've done all that, and that's definitely a video for another uh, time for us to actually cover that side of things, normally the mocap comes back to you in an FBX file. That FBX file normally contains just a skeleton with the information that you just captured on your mocap. So the way you open it is actually just dragging the FBX or opening the FBX and then importing the FBX data. And what you get is basically this, right? Like a skeleton with nothing in it. And in this case, I have an example here of a guy doing the Gangnam style, <laughs> pretty cool. Um, but it can be anything that you want, anything that you captured. So if you actually were good enough to actually do the Gangnam style dance and you jumped on a suit and you actually did this, this is what you would see in the end. So um, I actually just downloaded a few examples for you guys to see, but if you, you can actually have like a simple jump animation, for example, um, this will be another another example of mocap being actually kind of uh, captured by you jumping in a suit and doing it or an actor jumping in a suit and doing it. Now, when this happens is a much better way of working with mocap because it's you or is an actor that you're directing doing the motion for you or a fellow animator, which happens sometimes as well. So because you feel like you have a hand on the mocap, because you either directed it or you acted it out, you actually are much more invested into cleaning this mocap yourself and kind of cleaning any pops and stuff. Now, you have to import the mocap and I'm not gonna go into that because there's several uh, ways for you to do that. The most common one is going into Motion Builder and then bringing the mocap in, but that will also involve you having a character for your project, for your game, that you can actually kind of uh, get the mocap from the skeleton to your character. And that can actually happen if the characters have different sizes, for example. Or you can do it in Maya with plugins like Red9. Red9 allows you to actually kind of uh, uh, in, uh, bring in information with a thing called Pro to Bind. And basically you can skip the motion builder step and just uh, use Maya to actually import your mocap. It's very, very useful, very, very fast, very, very powerful. So after you actually have your mocap imported and you have your character as well, 
things look a little bit like this. So this is a character, once again, the Red Nine puppet. So thanks a lot, Red Nine, for allowing me to use this puppet as an example. And then you have the skeleton actually driving this motion. That motion has been brought into your rig. So now your rig is doing exactly what the mocap was doing. So let's say you actually kind of had this pose and then you went to a run, right? So this is what you either directed or capture yourself doing. Pretty cool, awesome stuff. Thing is, depending on the mocap studio that you use, and the setup, camera setup, and all that stuff that you have, the mock-up can actually be either much more like super amazing solve where it's like super accurate in terms of like the feet are in the correct place, the hands are in the correct place, sometimes you get fingers, all that stuff. That is basically what you normally get. But uh, in this case, the mock-up is not really clean, which means that you actually have to actually go and clean it much, much more than you would on a better setup that had lots and lots of cameras and stuff. So that is actually something that you have to keep an eye on because you, when you get mocha out this way, that is not super clean. You have to go in and clean things up. And uh, things like fingers and hands and wrists and like the feet normally are going through the floor or they're slightly angled off the floor or something like that. You need to actually clean it up. You need to actually address it as an animator. So in this case, you can see that if I go into my front view, you can see that the feet are completely off. The hands are slightly broken. You can see like when he's, uh, he's running, his wrist is kind of broken as he goes through. Same thing with the other wrist. He's kind of like a mess, right? So those things can happen because of the mocap solve. This solve is not great. So I need to go in, clean it up a little bit. I'm not gonna do it right now for you guys. I have made a video before to talk about mocap cleanup. Please go and check it out. I'll link it down below. Um, but the result that we get after actually cleaning up the mocap a little bit, first pass cleanup is this. This is what I actually did for the video. So you can see here, like you have wrists going on, you have like the, the fingers are kind of, kind of clenched and you animated the fingers now, it's no longer this flat hand that you get and the feet are on the floor and he's actually kind of uh, hitting the floor at the correct places, he's bending his feet, like the, the wrists are no longer broken as he goes through and it still looks uh, realistic, it still looks naturalistic. And that's basically what you need to, to actually think about whenever you deal with mocap. At any point that you actually kind of clean the mocap, the idea is that you want to preserve the mocap, that momentum, that naturalistic vibe and tempo as much as you can, because that's what the studio is paying for, right? To actually get that realistic vibe. As an animator, we have a tendency to kind of like overwork things, especially if you're used to hanky. So when you look at things in mocap, if you actually start cleaning up the wrists, all of a sudden you think the elbow is off and the shoulder is off and actually the spine could actually use some work. And the more you actually think that way, the more the mocap starts actually kind of a changing and it becomes kind of like floaty and it's not hand key and it's not mocap, it's something in between that looks kind of ugly. So you have to actually preserve, like touch up the mocap, but not enough that doesn't destroy it. That is basically how you deal with mocap in a game environment as an animator. Now, some studios only do this, right? You actually just get the mocap, you clean it up, you split it into little pieces, get the loop working or something, and then you export it into game, and then you see how it works. Some of the studios actually have mocap and hand key. Some studios have just hand key. So let's talk about hand key next, because uh, hand key is very different from mocap. And you know how I showed you guys how a mocap file starts, which you have already the mocap there? Well, if you actually mocap for a very long time, what you get when you hand key a character in game is basically this. Just a T pose, a guy doing the T pose or the A pose, that's it. This is especially daunting if you've been doing mocap for a while. So small story here, but in one of the studios that I worked on previously, I worked uh, cleaning up mocap for about two years, two years and a half. When they first got me um, a hand key um, animation and you see this and then you know that you have to actually get this rig, this puppet, this character to move in a realistic way, it can be incredibly daunting because all of a sudden you have nothing. When you press play, there's nothing <laughs> and you have to do everything here. So um, that's when you truly realize how tough animation is. I mean, animators that have been hand keying for ages, obviously you know how this goes. This is basically your bread and butter. Animators that do mocap only, for them, this looks incredibly difficult. And the longer you go by without touching hand key, 
the more your timing gets messed up and the more you actually kind of start thinking that animation is too difficult. So if you do mocap all the time, if you want to do studios, make sure you do hand key on the side. I highly advise that. On a studio that does hand key, you actually have a little bit more time to do your animation. To do the same animation that you saw before where the guy is running and then you have to hand key everything, you probably will take about a week, maybe three or four days to do that the same animation. So as you can see, Studios understand that hand key takes a little longer and is worth it. So just to put things in perspective, whenever you actually have to do a quick blocking because you have to show your supervisor or your lead the animation on how, it, how it's looking, your ideas and where you're going, um, something like this, which is like a super simple block, um, take, takes about a half a day to do, would actually more than suffice for you to show your supervisor or your lead what do you intend to do with this animation right now? So let's say your lead asks you, can we have a little animation of a guy just like rolling his eyes and just poofing some air and be like, oh my God, I cannot believe that the person said it. Cool, no problem. You as an animator take that brief with you, get that T-pose character, there's no animation, half a day, an hour later or something like that, you pose the character as quick as you can, you actually make sure the pose is appealing and then you start kind of keying things like very sparingly. So here I have four, four keys, Sometimes I have about four, six keys, depending. Um, so just to make sure you actually hit the beats of what you're trying to actually animate to. And if there's no audio, then make sure you hit the, hit the beats that feel good to you. The spacing and the timing is all there. And you show that to your supervisor, they will see it and they'll be like, okay, cool, no problem. This is actually looking pretty good. Please go ahead and then spend the next two or three days working on animation to make it better. That is basically how it goes on pretty much every single studio that I've been when it comes to mocap and hand key. So as you can see, there's a little art to both of them. Obviously hand key is more obvious because you know as an animator that this is where you put your art, this is where you put your heart. Everything that you see here is basically you adding keys to every single controller and there's an art form to it. We all love it, I love it, it's great. When it comes to mocap, you kind of have to let go of that and just focus on the emotion that is already there and just massaging it in a way that actually feels natural and whatever you add to it, like I showed you previously when the elbows were off or the wrists were off or whatever, whatever you add to it needs to match that naturalistic movement that the actor had originally. Especially if it's you, yourself, doing the mocap uh, shooting, make sure that you actually autocorrect yourself because sometimes it's difficult because you kind of think, well, you know, I did it, so must be good. <laughs> Clean the mocap and make it look like you think of yourself walking and doing things, which is normally like with not a lot of weirdness going on, which is not the reality of it because we all slightly weird when we walk. So that's basically it. That is mocap versus hand key in games. Very different. Uh, both really satisfying and especially when you see some things w working in game really really nice it's just satisfying and like having cool mocap knowing that you kind of split the mocap into clips knowing that you cleaned it up and made it look as good as it is it's also satisfying because when you press the button it's about the feel of the game and in this case if the mocap is really clean and really nice and you know you author it correctly you know that you put a lot of yourself on that mocap clip also feels epic that's all I have for you guys for this week. So I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you actually press the like button, it helps a lot with YouTube and subscribe if you haven't. Until the next episode, stay well, stay safe. Peace.